In today's episode, I'll be creating a fully functional news aggregator in Python, which pulls all New York Times technology-related articles, extracts metadata from them, and performs sentiment analysis on every single one. Are you ready? I sure am. Let's dive right in. Hello, my name is Rohawk and I'm the founder of Empower Code, helping you make a change with technology. Today marks the 12th episode of my course, Data Science for Media Bias Detection, where I'll be teaching you how to create a fully functional Python news aggregator entirely from scratch. But first, let's start off with the components that we're going to use inside of our script. Number one, a news extract script which uses Newspaper 3K to access and store metadata from news articles. Number two, a web scraping script that uses beautiful soup and requests to extract the latest technology-related article URLs directly from the New York Times. And finally, number three, a natural language processing script that uses text blob to extract the polarity and subjectivity of a given news article. Now, if you're wondering how I created these scripts, or if you just want to learn a little bit more Python, the links to all the relevant course videos can be found in the description below. However, if you want to take on a journey of your own and compose an aggregator of your own, I have prepared a quick guide that can help you guys out. If you are looking to build an aggregator of your own, start by using a web scraping package like Beautiful Soup to extract a set of URLs from a reliable article section on a web page. Next, you can go ahead and use a library like Newspaper 3K to pull all relevant metadata from each article that you're able to extract. Finally, for an added touch and extra challenge, try adding an additional script which performs sentiment analysis, natural language processing. Even try to create text processing models which analyze each news article. But for our scenario, we can simply combine the three scripts mentioned earlier and add in some extra commands and lines of code to quicken the pace of our script. Well, without further ado, let's get started. After opening up PyCharm, I opened up my main.py file, where together we'll be finishing our source code for our newspaper scrape Python project. Let's get started. Awesome, now in order to get started, I need to import each and every one of the files that you see on the sidebar menu. So let me do that really quick and get back to you guys in a matter of seconds. Awesome, as you guys can see, I've imported all the individual scripts I need, as well as the time module, which we'll be using to perform some sleep commands in the middle of our code. Now that we have all of our materials up and ready, let me quickly type up an introductory message for the user to read when he or she opens up our script. Alright guys, that took a while, but as you can see, we were able to produce a fully functional introductory message for our script. This states the purpose of the newspaper scrape project, which is to scrape the latest articles in the technology section of the New York Times. With this out of the way, we can shift our attention to the overall user experience. In any program, you always want to incorporate the user in some way. This creates a fun, engaged experience for all parties involved. So here I simply assigned a variable name to an input prompt which says, enter your name to get started. With this field, we can now refer back to it in multiple parts and portions of our program to make the user feel more involved and engaged inside of our program. All right guys, this is how this script works so far. So we have our introductory message we discussed earlier and here, if I simply enter my name as input, it prints out, Welcome Rohawk, you will now see the latest technology articles in the New York Times. Now our user is introduced, and we can move on to some of the more detailed portions of our code. Now, since this is a web scraping program, we can also include some time.sleep commands. These sleep commands delay runtime by a certain amount of seconds, as specified by you, the programmer, and they also add an element of professionalism to your code because they balance out the elements and make it easier for the user to understand what's going on. So here we can simply say extracting article hyperlinks, add three dots to indicate time usage. Then thereafter, we can add time.sleep 
2. So our program will delay runtime by 2 seconds. After adding some more time.sleep commands, this is how our program functions. As you saw, the time.sleep commands come into effect and make the program a lot more easier to go through because you're able to see and read all of the individual steps that are happening within. Awesome, now we can incorporate our first script, News Extract, which pulls all the article URLs we need. So let me copy paste the code that we used in that script. Awesome, now let's go over this line by line to see how it works exactly. So the first line gets the content string that actually contains the HTML with all of our hyperlinks inside. After this, we get the start and ending indices of each and every hyperlink and assign the results to two lists, start indices and end indices. Then with all our lists and content string, we can finally get our URL list by calling our get all URLs method and passing in both of our lists and our content string as parameters. So let's print out our URL list to the console and see what we get. So after going through the initial stages of our script, we're able to get four or five URLs directly pulled from the New York Times technology section. So that part of our script is up and running. Now, if you want a more detailed explanation regarding how these methods actually came to be, the relevant course video will be linked down in the description below. Feel free to check that one out. Now it's time to incorporate the remaining two scripts into our code. So let's iterate over each URL in our URL list. Awesome, so we've iterated over each URL and we printed it out to the console followed by a string which reads article URL. Now we can use the summarize article method from our new scrape script. So here we can type in summarize article and pass in the URL that we're iterating through. What this summarize article method does is it pulls some really cool metadata from each article, including the published date of the article, all the images inside, and the author name. For more information on this, check out the relevant video in my course to learn more. Link in the description. Next, below our article summary, we can call our find sentiment function from our news NLP script. So here we simply have find sentiment and we pass in the article summary as a parameter. So what this find sentiment function does is it extracts all the average polarity and subjectivity sentiments from each article. So polarity measures how positive or negative something is and subjectivity measures how biased something is. Finally, in the last two lines of our for loop, we can simply go ahead and print a line of dashes as well as a time.sleep command which will allow the user to read all of the information that's being presented to them. Alright guys, now that we're done with our for loop, let's add some closing messages to cap it all off. So first, let's print a blank line and then let's print the articles have been successfully extracted on a new print statement. Now in order to tell the user how many articles are actually extracted, we can simply take the length of our URL list and typecast it to a string. That's pretty cool. Finally, we can thank the user for participating in our program and also mention their name previously extracted from the user input. Now there's only one thing left to do, run this program and see what 10 episodes of work has gotten us to. Let's do the final project run. All right, guys, I run my program. Here we see our introductory message being printed out to the console. Let me go ahead and enter my name. And it's extracting our hyperlinks, retrieving our summaries. Here we see our first complete article. We have our URL here at the top, our author, our published date, our top image URL, all the images inside of our article, a quick article summary, as well as a final analysis of our article. Scrolling down, we see yet another analysis. This is coding in action. As you can see, the articles are segmented by seven seconds. This allows the user enough time to read all of the information being presented to them. And as the articles keep popping up, this is a perfect place to catch up on the latest technology related news from the New York Times. This is the culmination of our project. And I have to say, 
It's pretty cool. One by one, each article analysis section comes with all the metadata, a quick summary, and an overall sentiment for each. Finally, to finish things off, at the bottom of our code, we see a closing message which summarizes everything that's just happened. It says the articles have been successfully extracted, and in total, we were able to extract nine different articles. This is the culmination of a combination of multiple Python scripts. And I have to say, I'm really satisfied with how it's come out. Now it looks really professional and we're able to get a lot of information in just a couple minutes of Python code. This is what coding is all about after all. It's all about having fun and exploring unknown domains and all along the way, learning new concepts, facts, and tools. I hope you guys have enjoyed the building of this amazing news aggregator and I hope you've learned a thing or two as well. Back to the camera. And there you have it. By using Python fundamentals, we were able to create a fully functional news aggregator which will update each and every day. This is what code is about, having fun and learning all along the way. In the coming episodes, we will be discussing the role of data science in harnessing social change and impact. Once again, if you still have doubts or are confused, the script we wrote together is stored on GitHub. Feel free to access the description down below to access the link. Once again, thank you so much for watching this episode. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.